So my dumbass brother decided to get too drunk one night and leave the hose on and flood the whole basement. You know, no big deal. So there's a contractor down there as I was doing this commentary or attempting to, and uh, halfway through, the saw ruined it, so I had to start over. And woe and behold, I figured I might as well try and do this outside. I'll head out to my car, since clearly I can't do it in my house because of this goddamn saw. So I go out to my car and I do half the commentary again, only to realize after I listen to the audio that it sounds horribly echoey and the slight amount of AC that I did have on to prevent my shirt from becoming a sopping rag of sweat and just disgust was sounding like a freaking turbine from a Boeing 747 right there in my ear, and it was just ruining it. And so essentially, what's happened now is when I do these Would You Rathers, I don't do the same questions again. If I mess up the first part, I just go to the next one and keep going because I don't like to do the same questions over because then they're not original and it's not good. Uh, so basically what I did today is just waste like 15 perfectly awesome Would You Rathers, and that makes me mad, you know? That's a shitty situation. And also, I, got, I, was, I put on a shirt that's brand new today, brand new shirt, Looking fly, looking awesome. Went out to try to do the commentary. Come back out, looks like I just ran a half marathon. Like, Jesus Christ, looks ridiculous. Now I'm going to have to put on a shitty shirt and I won't even be able to impress the ladies. God, this whole day is ruined almost. But uh, anyway, this is Taylor, uh, probably a pretty late intro. And uh, now we're going to do the Would You Rather. So buckle up and uh, don't really have anything to say. Clever after that. So Would You Rather, receive $5 a day for the rest of your life or receive 50000 crisp... Lincoln's, no, $50,000 right here, right now. All right, so 50000 crisp Washingtons. Ooh. Uh, or maybe, is there a $50,000 bill? That'd be a cool investment. Maybe one uh, Benedict Arnold. That's a really unexpected person to have on a $50,000 bill, right? But uh, anyway, so I'm going to say that everyone who is thinking that $5 a day is the better option are really not taking inflation into account and are really overestimating their ability to save the money and not blow it the second they get it. Because as far as I'm concerned, like if somebody, if I got $20 a day, that's a, enough money that I could justify like putting it away every day. Like bam, $20, $20. Oh, there's $100. Like just just slowly stacking it up. But with $5? $5? Like when I, when I see a $5 bill, I think like, oh yeah, that's like a meal at McDonald's. So that's like a diet Dr. Pepper and uh, maybe, I don't know, a candy bar or something like that. So it, it's, it's not like you're going to be piling up every day like haha got monday's crisp lincoln putting it on top of sundays saving all this up like hell no you're not going to be doing that you're just going to have five dollars a day extra that you're going to blow on menial shit your whole life whereas if you had fifty thousand dollars you can buy menial shit right now right now and it can be a big thing like a big waste of money like a car not just like a small waste of money like a reese's fast break uh and so i'm gonna say 50000 right here, right now. Also, because even if I did successfully save up $5 a day for the rest of my life, which, let's think, I mean, if I live to be, like, 75, I've got, like, what, 20,000 days left? Like, that's 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 $100,000, but by the time I'm that age, it won't be worth $100,000, and I'll be too old to enjoy it, you know? And what, what's going to happen then? My kids are going to get the money? Yeah, yeah, fuck them. They're not getting it. I was the one who stacked up those Lincolns all day my whole life. Yeah, they're not getting it. I'm blowing it every day. I'd rather blow it on a Reese's Fast Break and a Diet Dr. Pepper than give it to my ingrate kids. Jesus. So, receive 50000 right now. 47% said receive 50000 right now. Are you serious? Really? 53% would rather have $5 a day for the rest of your life. All right, so we can deduce from this that 53% of people are grossly uh, misinformed about the nature of inflation and are also grossly overestimating their ability to save money. So, you're idiots, and 47% of us were right. Thank you. Next would you rather marry at age 10 or never marry at all? Oh, easy answer. Never marry at all. I mean, think about it. Like, if I'm, even if I was 10 and the other girl was 10 and we had, like, a crush on each other, like, that doesn't mean anything. That means nothing at all. You, you have your whole lives ahead of you to grow up and to change. And, like, that's, that's before the puberty bunny even creeps out from under the bed, you know? Like, what if she, like, I had a crush on her and thought she was a cute 10-year-old when we were kids, and then we, like, grow up, and then she turns into some sort of Jabba the Hutt monster, and that should, it'll be unfortunate for me and her, you know, you gotta think about that too, but really. And the same could go for me. Maybe she thought I was cute when I was 10, and then I end up being a fat idiot who just yells on YouTube, you know? That could be a thing too. So, uh, <laughs> oh, some self-deprecating humor. Anyway. Uh, so I'm gonna say never marry at all because honestly, like, what is what is the point? Like, what? Why would, why, why would you want to marry at ten or not marry at all? Like, it just seems weird to me that we're still so ingrained in this marriage mindset. Like, you don't need a freaking certificate from the state to say that you, uh, you and another human being love each other and are gonna live together. You don't need that. I mean, yeah, tax benefits would be nice and all the other benefits therein, but you don't need it, you know. So I'd rather go with never marry at all than uh, risk, you know. If I'm marrying at age ten, chances are my parents like sold me to some fat old woman to just. Ooh, ooh. Anyway, all right, so never marry at all 
is 58%, and married age 10 are 42%. So what we can deduce from this is that 58% uh, of the people taking the survey are male, and 42% are female. All right, that's science right there. So would you rather get killed by your boyfriend uh, slash girlfriend, so either or, or both, you know, if you're risky, uh, or get killed by your best friend? All right, so, well, what the hell? How am I... What's the point of answering this question? Either way, I end up dead. Like, it, I don't care how I die. I mean, like, I care, like, if I'm getting tortured or something, but if I'm just dying, like, if any of these options are just, like, me getting shot in the temple, like, I don't care. You know, like, it, I'm going to be dead. I'm not going to know. I'm not going to be there at my funeral. I'm not going to be looking down from heaven like, you bastard shot me in the head. Like, no, I'm not going to think that. I don't care. I mean, I guess I would want to go for the most creative death then, so maybe I could make it into the papers or something. Like, I mean, girlfriends kill their boyfriends, and boyfriends kill their girlfriends pretty regularly, it seems, so I'm not going to go with that one. As far as best friends, uh, I mean, it's not like best friends are like an actual relationship status, so it's not going to be in the paper like, best buddy kills his best bud. Like, no. They're just going to say, like, friend kills other guy. That's going to be it. So I'm going to say, uh, killed by your best friend, but I'm going to take a twist and say, not my best friend man's best friend, a dog, a thousand Dobermans chasing me down a highway as I'm on a moped, firing, uh, you know, paintballs back at them, and then they just eventually overcome me and maul me, and there's, like, helicopters and shit watching me, it's a huge deal, uh, I'd probably, like, get a Wikipedia page or something out of it, really, so, uh, I'm gonna go with that one, uh, killed by my best friend, that's 42% and 58%. Said boyfriend and girlfriend. I can't really judge people for how they answered this question, since, honestly, I mean, it really is the same. You're dead either way. Um, all right, so would you rather go to a gunfight with a pellet pistol or go to a knife fight with a butter knife? Uh, I mean, at first, this seems like it might be a difficult question to answer, but after, like, I don't know, like, how long was that? Like, a third of a second of logic? You really come to the conclusion that you would rather go to a knife fight with a butter knife. Like, if you're in a gunfight with a pellet pistol, that pellet pistol may as well be a rubber band and a goddamn paperclip. Because when you, someone else has a real gun, they're not shitting with you. They're gonna hit you in the face with a bullet, and it's gonna be going faster than your little pellet, and it's gonna rip your face off. It's gonna kill you. You're gonna be dead. Like, there's no, like, there's no chance you can win with a pellet pistol. Like, even if you shot him, like, square in the softest part of his eye, like, yeah, he'd grab his eye and go down, but he'd probably be so infuriated that he'd close his eye and shoot you right in the head with his 9mm or whatever he has. Whereas with a butter knife fight, like, no matter how skilled I am, you could give me uh, two goddamn samurai swords and give Jackie Chan a butter knife, and he would kill me. Undoubtedly, he would kill me. But if you give Jackie Chan or, you know, the best gunsmith or the best gun shooter, I don't even know what the terminology is, uh, like if you give the best shooter in the world a pellet pistol and you give me a 9mm, I'm going to win 100 times out of 100. Because no matter what he does, I'm going to be probably severely maimed, true, but he's going to be the one who's dead and bleeding on the ground. So I'm going to go with a uh, good one knife fight with a butter knife. Also because, like, that's just badass, you know? Like, who, like, you, you, if you win, like if a guy has, like, a butterfly knife or something and you just come out with a butter knife and just, wham! I don't even need the fly, bitch! And then just... Slice his throat like that. Serrated. Nice. Nice. All right, 69% said knife fight with a butter knife. That's way better than I expected. 31% uh, apparently have a death wish, so uh, good for them, I guess. All right. Would you rather, and this is going to be the last one for today, have surgery in a Mexican hospital or have surgery on the American Indian reservation closest to you? Um... Jesus Christ, like, I don't even know. Like, is there, is there like, a... I know there's a stereotype for Mexican uh, hospitals being bad and dirty, but I didn't, I didn't even know there was a stereotype for American Indian reservation hospitals. I guess they're really terrible, too. Um, I don't know. But I'm going to go with the option that doesn't involve me having to go to Mexico because that's a long way away, and I could probably go to South Dakota, like, where the re Indian reservation is, or maybe... I don't even know where the closest one to me is, uh, but I could go there for much cheaper. And, you know, I, I don't know. I, I've never hung out with a bunch of Native Americans on a reservation. I've been to Mexico a couple times. I can always learn something new, you know? Trying to look positively at this, you know? Ah... <sighs> There we go, ending on a note of positivity. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leaving a rating would make me uh, happy in the pants. Also, um, oh, almost forgot. 67% said American Indian Reservation and 33% said Mexican Hospital. I always forget to do the stats at the last question, and you guys always get on to me. Uh, but anyway, as I said, hope you guys enjoyed, and I love you.